six minutes after the hour of one o'clock. Welcome back, hour number two on a Thursday, October the 27th, 1988. And of course, as everybody knows, October the 27th is our annual Lash Out at Lassiter program. The opportunity for all of you who sit home, you know, mumbling, muttering under your breath to, to put it on the air to expose Lassiter for work, for whatever it is that you think that he might be. If, of course, you have the courage, you probably don't. 461 night. You and Tampa, you, you're on the air. How's it going, Bob? Oh, fine, thank you. I'm mad as heck. Oh, that you place know. down below. Uh-huh. What, what's the problem, you? Oh, uh, well, last week you came on the radio. Mm-hmm. You were fussing and complaining that Mary wouldn't give you the car. Yep, 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 yep. Then you begged and pleaded and begged asked and pleaded. people. I mean, um, I, I even solicited postcards from strangers. Yeah, well, see, the problem is I'm not as quick as your normal caller. Yeah. So it took me a while to, you know, get get up my thoughts, and then I wrote a little story to Mary. And if you would, I'd, I'd like to recite it. Well, please. Okay, um, if I was of another color persuasion, it would be a little bit better, so you have to understand that, um... Oh, well, anyway, with rap music playing in the background, here, mm-hmm. here it goes. Let me tell a little story about a man named Bob. He works hard for a living, talk radio's his job. Working nights, I thought you were okay. I just love the move to FLA. He's got a knack for keeping us thinking. Please, please, Mary, give Bob the Lincoln. Lincoln. Oh, all right, all right. Oh, okay. At 12.08, he starts his gig. Get off my phone, subhuman pig. (laughs) Lionel, Carolyn, Diane T.J. Slick Dick, Ted Webb, show us the way. Kahlua and vodka, Bob used to be drinking. Mary, sweet Mary, give Bob the Lincoln. One more time. Tom from Lutz, you have been banned. Only proof does Bob demand. Ice cream and pretzels, New York cheesecake. Snowbirds and Christians, how much can they take? Kuzu, TKN, your ratings, ratings are sinking. Muffin, corn muffin. Give Bob the Lincoln. Oh, man, that is great. That's fantastic. That's, That's... from your number one dog. God, if only it's we hard white... to catch a real football team when you're in Tampa. You know, if only we white people had some rhythm. I mean, you know, I think that that has chart possibilities. Well, it's hard. A blonde here, blue-eyed kid, you know, to think of these kind of things, you know. Oh, tell me about it, man. I, you know, I have trouble getting it together to walk across the street. <laughs> I can't do rap either. Oh, what can I say? You well, but you time. write well. Oh, hey, thanks, you. Be good. Hey, uh, uh, Michelle in St. Petersburg. Michelle, you're on the air at 970 WFLA. Yes, this is just throwing rocks at Bob last week. I'm not mm-hmm. going to throw rocks at you. I want to oh, know bar. something. This is getting real uh, personal. Yeah. Uh, you real close with your father? No, not at all. I haven't seen my father in uh, almost uh, 21 years. Or No, it's about 20 years. Have you ever tried to talk to him or get a relationship with him, like a father and son? That's a little difficult to do when, you know, one party is in his 60s and the other is in his 40s. What? And, you know, there, there's an awful lot of... You see, my parents went through an extremely ugly, ugly divorce. Oh, so has mine. You know, it's it's one of the great tragedies of life. Uh, I'm not the only person who got caught in the middle of something like this. Yes. There was such animosity between the two sides and such bloodletting and such poisoning that, okay. it, it, you know, there's there's just too much there. Oh, I understand that, but of course you was not married to your father. That's between your father and your mother. I'm saying, have you ever tried to show any love or call him like on Father's Day and, and you know, talk with him any? Okay, my father was dominated by his mother. Then when he married my mother, he was dominated by her. The two women despised each other. I mean despised, hated each other. To the point where my grandmother... His mother, my father's mother, Mm -hmm. suggested to him that I probably wasn't even his son. You know, I've had to listen to this kind of stuff in my lifetime. And while I miss very, very much having a father-son relationship, while I believe firmly in my heart that my father is a very decent, good man, there's just too much there. You know, there are too many things that... Uh, between between your mother and your father. Well, that I'm also involved in as well. Oh, no, but... It's I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not a great deal of fun to sit in a living oh, room... I know, I know. ...on an October night uh, in, let's see, 1961, and have your grandmother try to explain to you why she doesn't think that your father is your father. Okay, you but... Know? And I... have him sit there and keep quiet about it. Oh, I know it hurts, but because your father has been... What the hell difference does it make to you, Michelle? Because I heard you talk about it before, 
And the reason why I say that because I know you you do love you do love your father, right? How can I love a man I don't know, Michelle? Have you ever tried to know him? Have you ever tried to reach out to your father? I, I Michelle, know I just got finished telling you a horror story. Well, and it I didn't agree, even go in your head because you just don't give a damn about anything for some bizarre reason. Oh, I do. You've got it in your head to call up somebody you don't even know on the radio the who had I... the decency to answer your question with personal detail that's none of your damned business, and you didn't even listen to it. Oh, I have, but I want to tell you something that happened to me when I listened to you on the radio, and it, it really it touched me because the same thing happened to me and my father. And, you know, I used to get beat up and get beaten and stuff. But then... I have love. I have love for him, and I reach out to him, and we have a wonderful relationship. And it has nothing to do with him and my mother anymore because I'm a grown woman. So it's my responsibility to reach out to my father. I don't want him to die not knowing that I love him. The same for me. If, if you know, if I have kids and I got married, I wouldn't want my kids to do that to my husband. I don't know if you have kids or not, but if you ever do plan to have kids, wouldn't you want rela a relationship with your son, your daughter? No, it doesn't matter what you and your wife been through. Michelle, you didn't hear a word I said. Thanks for your call. I'm glad it worked out for you. Zach in Spring Hill, you're on the air at 970 WFLA. Hey, Robert. Hey, Zach. Hey, Jack. Oh, Jack. Jack. Okay. Spring Hill Jack, yeah. Uh, how was your podiatrist convention? Oh, uh, the podiatrist convention? I don't recall going to uh -huh. one. Ah, I got you. You told me you weren't going to see the Grateful Dead concert because you had a podiatrist convention. No, no, no. I, said, I probably said an appointment. Uh... <laughs> well, it was a, the concert was two Saturday and Sunday. So, you, I'm, you, know, you know, I, Jack, I'm going to be honest with you. I am just not into going to see those musical groups that appeal to the, you know, to the old folks. <laughs> oh, but I'm you know, I'm, I, I'm, I'm a contemporary man, Jack. You know, I, I give me a Guns and Roses, you know, that kind of stuff. Oh, uh, not my Lord. Jerry I'm Garcia. And the gr I mean, Jerry Garcia was big when I was a little kid, man. <laughs> He's still pretty big. Well, he's a lot bigger than he used to be in yeah, some ways. True. I never thought I could find something to lash out at you about, but damn, that was it. I mean, I remember seeing Jerry Garcia, this would uh, be about 17, 18 years ago, about 17 years ago, in Utica, New York, and he had gray hair then. Oh, <laughs> uh, I used to, in Philadelphia, at the Spectrum, I used to camp out to get tickets in the middle of February. I honestly, I do not understand the attraction to the Grateful Dead. Uh, they, they cut one song that I liked. The only song, you know, trucking. Uh -huh. it's, it's the only song they have ever done that I enjoyed. I just do not understand the attraction. It's really weird. You don't get uh, get into their philosophy or get any anything out of it. Get into their philosophy. What's their philosophy? Uh, oh boy, I guess it's an individual thing. I can't. I'm not going to convert you. That's for sure. Well, you just can't get good acid anymore, man. You know? <laughs> uh, but they say to listen to their music and move on and, and live what they're saying. You don't need to die. I found out myself. You don't need the drugs. I, 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 I don't want to follow a rock and roll band around the country and camp out in parking lots. Okay. I'm beyond... I, well, it's not that I'm beyond it. I was never there to start with. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I'm not trying to convert you, that's for sure. But I just... I finally caught you in something. I can't believe you go to podiatrist convention. Well, I, ju I just can't believe that you go around and, you know, pay good money to listen to old folks' music. Oh, but I don't. I don't, okay? When I was going to school up in Philadelphia, I used to. But I, mean, I, I, the place I was, have a little boy. I uh, listened to their music and The place on. was probably filled with gray hairs and blue hairs holding hands saying, Oh, honey, remember back then when trucking was the big... It's our song. <laughs> I was out painting my new house while that concert was going on. Explaining to my wife what I used to be like. Yeah, well, I'll try to keep it from your kids, huh? <laughs> All right, Bob, thank you very much. Take care, Jim. Thank you, Bob. St. Petersburg, Steve, you're on the air at 970 WFLA. Yeah, Bob, I wanted to uh, to take you to task on something. Okay. Your um, your gun control philosophy? Uh, I don't have a gun control philosophy per se. Uh, I have some very strong ideas. Yeah, but go ahead. Well, um... I believe, uh, would you agree with what Ron Silvers is trying to do in Miami? I don't know what he's trying to do in Miami, sir. Um, you know, he wants a seven-day cooling-off period for all handguns? Seems reasonable to me. Fourteen would be probably better. Uh, Thirty would be really ideal. Well, um, he was making this comment, you know, that, um, you know, uh, you should go to the police if someone is threatening your life. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, I find that rather rather ludicrous myself because... Well, it's probably because you don't enjoy living in an organized society. Well, no, what it is is the police can't do anything until a crime has been committed, and I'll, I'm glad the police will be there to pick up well, my actually, dead body. Well, actually, you're quite wrong. You're, you're quite wrong. What the law states, sir, is that if I threaten to kill you to your face, you can then go to the police and file formal charges against me. That is a criminal act. If after you hang up, I turn to Michael Serio and say, the next time I see Steve, I'm going to kill him, then you can't go to the police. Then there's nothing that they can do. But if a direct threat is made to you, then that is a, a, a cause for criminal action. Well, suppose it's, it's not, you know, a direct threat. Suppose it's overt, it's, you know, overt things, you know. You know, I'm just saying it's, it's, it's real nice. That the well, what do you mean suppose? I just told you what the law is, sir. I just feel it'll be it's real nice. It's not a matter nice, of suppose. You know, that that's the way it is. I just feel it'll be real nice that the police will be there to pick up my dead body, you know. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, <clears throat> I, I guess what you should do is if someone's breaking into your house to steal your stereo or your TV, is you should, um, is you should call the police while they're doing it. Well, yes, sir, you should, and you should also defend your property. Well, that I, I certainly would do that. I, I happen to own a own a handgun, and if someone breaks into my house, but know. sir, in essence, what you're saying to me, I mean, you know, here's where your logic is just a, a wee tad flawed. Is that when someone's breaking into your house to steal your stereo, rather than call the police, what you should do is run down to the 24-hour gun shop, buy a gun, of course, without a waiting period and ammunition, get back to the house, hopefully in time to catch the, the perpetrator. Well, then, sir, what's your problem? Well, um, I'm talking about other people. I personally think that... Oh, so other people should run down to the gun shop in, while the robbery is being committed. No, I think and they of course, do it before there. the robbery's been committed. I think well, then, sir, then what's the problem with a 7 or 14 or 30-day waiting period? I don't know. It just seems like more bureaucratic no, I know you crap. don't know, sir, because you haven't thought about it. It seems like more bureaucratic crap. Oh, uh, more bureaucratic crap, I see. You know, I, uh, you know, if first it starts out at seven days, and it goes to fourteen, and it goes to thirty, then to sixty, uh -huh. then you know to ninety, and eventually, you know, what's the point in applying? Mm -hmm. You know, that's that. I truly believe that's how it'll be. And like, you know, I, I'm, I, you know, seriously, if someone breaks into my house, you know, I, I'm, I'll say it right on the air. You know, their life is 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 not worth my stereo. Oh my goodness. You you would say that right on the air. Yeah, you know. Wow. My stereo's what worth, a man of courage. My 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 stereo is worth more than any burglar's life. Mm -hmm. You know, he may be a human being, but if he's out there robbing and stealing, and you know, hey, you know, there's a robber every minute. Sir, I I don't recall ever saying I was against an individual defending his house and home and family. Well, you well that's, I don't believe that's, I've that's ever what said Marion that. Hammer said when she was on your show, and you seemed to be fairly fairly at odds with her. Not on that issue, sir. Uh, I, I have never indicated in any shape, manner, or form that I don't believe an individual has a right to defend himself or his family when he is threatened. And when somebody breaks into your house in the middle of the night or in the middle of the afternoon, for as, as far as that goes, then as far as I am concerned, your life is in jeopardy. And therefore, you have the right to use deadly force. It's what I've always said. It's what I always will say. Well, then, at least on that, on that, we agree. I, yeah. I, I, incredible. No, it's not incredible, sir. It's what I've always said. It's just that the thing that's incredible is that you've never heard it. That's what's incredible, sir. Well, so you were so blinded in your lust for guns that you don't want to listen to anything that would even remotely be in opposition to your po to your position. Well, then, let me let me ask you a, a question, and you'll um, I'll, I'll tie these two together. I believe that um, that you know there are countries in this world that are a direct threat to us. So why don't you, um, in essence, believe in um, eliminating them? Because you know, you, you see, you see the. Um well, well, sir, there's there's a real easy answer to that. I I don't see any reason to eliminate another country because you think they're a direct threat. You know that that that's, that one should be real easy to understand. Well, what is it? What is it that you it will need to happen for you to um, have a direct threat? Should should a few bombs fall on New York? Sir, don't be an idiot. Well, don't, we, don't ask me stupid questions. I'm in no mood for stupid questions. You know. Well, I, I'm asking you what what would um what what, what in your eyes would constitute uh, places like say Iran, uh, Libya, Nicaragua? What in your eyes would constitute them as a threat? In other words, where's the dividing line? Sir, they lack any ability whatsoever, <coughs> whatsoever to attack this nation. 
No, but they can sure do a lot of damage to us overseas, and I feel that... Well, yes, sir. They, they, you're, you're quite right. They can sink our ships when we park them off their shores. Well, they can you're, also you're quite get right. In, they can also, at least for the uh, Middle East countries, can fairly easily get into Europe and... You uh, see, sir, if, I, if, if a hostile nation parked a warship off of old, let's say, Tampa Bay, uh, I, I would suspect, sir, that you would be in favor of, of trying to sink that ship? Yeah. But well, what well about... sir, sir, don't don't the Iranians have the, have the same right when a hostile nation brings a warship off of their coast? But they they started it with the disc with the bomb attacks in Berlin with it in the disco. Uh, sir, first of all, you're referring to the rumor uh, of Muammar Gaddafi. You know, you've now moved off to Libya. Yeah, that's what right. I, you know. Libya, it, it's all well, the well, same. Sir, They're sir, all the same people. Sir, the the people who did that were caught tried and convicted by the West German government, and there was no Libyan connection. Well, I, I certainly would find I know, that details, details. Right, of course, the, the West Germans are well-known terrorist sympathizers. 22 and a half minutes after the hour of 1 o'clock. Uh, oh, this is great, fantastic participation out of Pinellas County for a lash out at Lassiter Day. Hillsboro apparently are much more popular in Hillsboro. There are for the gutless wonders in Hillsboro. Uh, John in St. Petersburg. John, you're on the air at 970 WFLA. Bob. Yes, sir. Hey, over the period of time, I've caught you in plenty of lies, buddy. Well, why don't you, uh, you know, expose me? Okay, first of all, you say that you're not a communist. <laughs> Second of all, you say you're not black. Mm -hmm. You said you weren't, and I know for a fact that your father was black. Mm -hmm. That's why you don't have What was his first name? Now, wait a minute. I'm not finished. No. Now. I mean, Art, don't you, you really... You were in a draft dodger. Don't, don't you, you really sir? feel bad? Don't you really feel bad that the best you can do... I mean, here I am. I drive you insane. You listen virtually every day of your life. And the I only thing you can possibly do to try, you know, somehow to get to me is to make things up. You know, you're hoping that people will know that they're... Well, you're hoping that people will think that they're true, but you know that you're lying. Bob. Are you don't you have any shame at all, man? Hey, don't None? you have any shame? You're a bum. What are you doing on the radio? You belong on TalkNet. I already told you that. Mm -hmm. You're trying to bring your ratings up again after I gave you that good tongue lashing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go for it, man. Or is it not true? Is, is what true? That, you, that you're trying to pull your ratings up again with this bash bob, like the old times. No, sir. I, I, I get paid oh, to get ratings you, every day. Every Shut every up, day, sir. Oh, yeah. Oh, he hung up. Oh, pity poop. Off we go to uh, Joe in Tampa. Joe, hi. You're on the air at 970 WFLA. How you doing, Lasher? Uh, fine, thank you. Good. Uh, you're going to have to help me out with this one, okay? Yeah, what was that? Was that, Joe? I don't think these new listeners realize what lash out at Lassiter means. Mm -hmm. I don't think most of them were around when you had Bash Lassiter. Mm -hmm. So if you help me out here, maybe we can show them what it used to be like. Oh, jeez. I, you know, I, I, I just love the old times, don't okay, you? Okay, so let's let's start over. Oh, okay, uh, Joe in Tampa. Hi, Joe. You're on the air at 970 WFLA. Go ahead, you miserable subhuman pig. Yeah, Lassiter, let me tell you something. You are a fat, disgusting, smelly pig. Yeah, you're sir, you know, dominant. sir, sir, you know you're right. I am fat and I am disgusting. You're a dominant. You, sir, are obnoxious. I'm going on a diet tomorrow. What are you going to do about it? You're a fat, disgusting, obnoxious person, and you shouldn't even be allowed on the air. You're a communist. You support the Communist Party, and you're a disgusting, subhuman Pig. No, sir. The only and thing I support is my derriere. You know what I mean? And what gives you the right to talk bad about other people? And there's one more thing I'd like to say to you. Yeah, what's that, fella? Oh, my. Kevin in St. Petersburg. Kevin, you're on the air at 970 WFLA. Yeah, Bob. <clears throat> yeah. I want to know why, you, why, why, why didn't you cut that clan man off there when he was on there during 1 o'clock, man? The uh, clan man? I don't know yeah, what you're you talking know, about. The, the guy from Indian Rocks, man. Uh-huh. What about him? Well, you know, why you let that racist crap on the air for, man? Because that's what he had to say. Well. And I think it's very important that people know what other people have to say. Well, I wish, I, I've told you before, I'm in the African People's Socialist Party, and I wish we knew where, we, where he lived. He, his house mm -hmm. wouldn't be there long. I'm talking burn, baby, burn. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know, I just, I just, you know, I like you, Bob, man, but I can't see why you let these these crazy people, you know, you know. 
Well, I, I thought it was very important to let him on the air, just as I think it's very important to allow you, a white man, trying to do a black, you know, dialect and trying very hard to make black people look bad. I, I think it's just as important that you be heard as well. Whitey. I am black. Sure. Well, I am. I'll be happy to come down to the station and let you see, man. Mm -hmm. The only thing black about you, Whitey, is your heart. Well, you know, I, I don't even know what point I can make if you don't even believe that I'm black. You know, I mean... You know what I'm saying? I'm, oh, I beg your pardon. You have made your point. Well, all I can do is, I, you know, I can't... I, there's not a uh, a TV screen on the phone, but um, mm -hmm. I am black. No, sir, there is not a TV screen on the phone. That's a, that's a very accurate statement on your part, and it's probably the only accurate statement during the course of this conversation. Freddie in St. Petersburg. Freddie, you're on the air at 970 WSLA. Hi, Mr. You know, I, I, I just don't understand why you people can't get it through your thick little heads that the microphone on your phone is so poor that it just doesn't, you know, pick up that kind of stuff. You guys are wasting your time. Oh, my God. Old home week it is. Rocky, the rock and roll clansman in St. Petersburg. Rocky, baby, how you doing? I'm doing real good, Mr. Lasseter. Oh, it's been such a long time, Rocky. Yes, it has. And you never sent me the newsletter. Huh? You never sent me the newsletter, Rocky. Hey, there was a reason for that, and I'll tell you the reason. Mm, what's when that? I, remember the last time I'll call you, I, I was talking to David Duke? Uh-huh. And I said something about I was going to write you something, and you made a smart comment, and you said that, no, it's still on my nightstand. I didn't send you nothing. But you told David Duke it was still on your nightstand, and you ain't read it yet. I, 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 I don't recall saying anything like yet. that. I know huh? you haven't sent me anything, Rocky. That's why I, I said and have said numerous read. times that I don't believe you're what you say you are. That's not the point I'm trying to make. The point I'm trying to make is why I did not send you the information that you wanted. Well, why, why is that, Rocky? Because you told David Duke when I called in... Well, well Rocky... You said that I was going to send you a... a a pamphlet on the art of clan craft. R Rocky. And you said it was still on your nightstand. Uh, Rocky. Yes. Uh, you had been promising for months to uh, <clears throat> send the yeah, newsletter, and, and you yeah, never did, that's Rocky. That's true. That's true. I'll admit when I'm wrong. But I also, you also said that the day that you banned me was a day that I called in to bash Martin Luther King, and then you said adios. And that was a day that I wanted to get the address to send you the information. Oh, Rocky, it's in your phone book. You Give me a break. You could simply write WFLA Tampa and it would well, get you, here, and you know you that. Go down a minute so I can write the address down here, will you? I... Sure, Rocky. All right, now, I know... Gee, I've missed Jackson, you so please. much, man. I, haven't what? you... I've missed you so much. I mean, come on, admit it, Rocky. Haven't you missed being on the show? You know I have. You know I'd be lying if I said I didn't miss you. We go way back. Way, way back. Almost my first day in this market. That's right. When you were working for Art Deneen or somebody. Yep, Art Deneen. Now, what's the address? Well, Art Deneen's address? He's out of work again. I don't want his address. I want your address. Oh, uh, I want the... WFLA. Wait a minute now. I want your home address. You, Rocky, you know I'm not going to give you my home address over well, the air. Well, give me the address where you work. WFLA. WFLA. 801. 801. East Jackson Street. Jackson Street. Mm -hmm. Tampa. I know it's in Tampa. I know I'm not... 33602. 33602? Uh-huh. Now, I'm going to tell you something. So what have you been doing with yourself, Rock? I've been writing a lot. I'm, I'm doing a lot of writing, and I've done a lot of traveling. Yeah. And uh, I did... I called Dick Norman about two weeks ago. I had been up in Montana and Idaho. Montana and Idaho? That's, oh, that's right. a strange place to vacation. What's wrong with that? Well, it's just that, you know, not many people go to Montana and Idaho to vacation. Oh, it's, it's very it's pretty country. I've, I've been in Idaho. I've not been in Montana, but I, I have been in Idaho. Idaho. Gorgeous Idaho. State. You know what that is? No, not off it's the top of my head. It's about 20 miles west of Coeur d'Alene. It's not too far from Spokane, Washington. Uh-huh. And I was up there with some associates. Some associates? And I had some relatives up there that lived there. Mm-hmm. That is, you know, they had to escape this area. Had to escape the area. Why did they have because to escape the area? Because it's full of bluebellies. Blue, what's a blue belly? You know what a blue belly is. It's, it's just a pretty name for a Yankee. 
You know, and I I've know never it, heard that term before. Blue belly. What, what does it mean? Well, the Union soldiers wore blue. Oh. And we used to see them. They'd all walk around. They were always over. They were stuff. See, the uh-huh. Southerners didn't get enough to eat. But we used to call the, we used to call them blue bellies because they had big old fat blue bellies sticking out. I see. Yeah, I've missed calling you. Of course, I have. So, what have you been doing with yourself I've besides been writing uh, a lot? Yeah, well, writing, writing what? What? What have I been writing? Yeah. I've been writing children's writing, stories. What? I'm writing. I'm writing essays. Well, who's reading them? Anybody I send them to. Oh, well, why haven't you sent me any? Well, you said you didn't want nothing. I beg your pardon. I've always said I wanted to see your well, writings. Do you want it or not? Yes. All right, now I'm going to tell you what I'm going to send you. I'm going to send you the visitor's pass. You've earned it. The visitor's pass? That's right. You don't really belong here. None of, none of these other blue bellies really belong here. What, what is a you visitor's mean, pass? Uh, uh, let me explain something. You, you know the St. Petersburg Times used to run an edition that said, The Vanishing Panther, uh, The Vanishing Wilderness. Yeah. Well, if that's true in the animal kingdom. And it's also true with the true Southerners. We're mm-hmm. a vanishing people. Oh, praise and the I Lord. want to be the voice of the people out here that the people who are left. There's a handful of us left. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you had a guy right on before me. I don't know if he was a black guy or a white guy. Ah, uh, come on, Rocky. You, you do great voices. You know that that was a put on. Now, he could have been, Mr. Laster. You cannot tell every time somebody calls in who it is. Mm-hmm. You know? I'm serious. But I will send you the visitor's pass. What is a visitor's pass? That gives you the right. That's If I was in charge, if I was the president, I would issue you a visitor's pass. This would allow you to stay here. You have to meet certain standards. But that does not mean you could be an, a citizen of Rocky, that. have I met your standards for residency? No. That's uh, why you're entitled to a visitor's pass. You don't deserve a visitor's pass, but I'm going to send you one. Well, what, what would Everybody I have to... that comes in here should have a visitor's pass. I don't need one because I would... Born and raised here, and I'm a ninth generation. I don't need a visitor's pass. Ninth? I seem to remember seven in the past. What? I, I seem to recall seventh no, generation. No, nine. If you find an old tape, you'll find it. Uh-huh. I, I don't guess you threw all the old tapes away. Well, I don't keep tapes, Rock. You don't, tape, you don't keep them? No, I don't. Well, how come Mr. Airstream's still still kicking if you don't keep them? Uh, Mr. Airstream hasn't been on the air in four, five, six months. I lost it. Oh. I don't have a copy of it anymore. Well, I do. Would you send it to me? Yeah, I'll send you one. Uh, you, know, you know it's very, very popular. And it's that time of the year again. It's it's time to you well, know, bring out Mr. Well, it's not really Estrin. that time of year yet. Well, it's but, close. Uh, come on, I Rock. Mean, they're, they're coming in. they're not really here yet. We're picking up Canadian quarters already at the 7-Eleven. And, you know, I would like to give my uh, prediction. You know, I do like to make predictions. You know, I have gotten letters from people who are passing through town and heard when I would play the Airstream tape, I've gotten letters from them when they got back home saying, you know, Oh, that man, that poor man, you were so rough on him. You were so mean to him. Yeah, I remember you had a guy call and wrote you a letter. Well, actually, yeah, the, uh, Joe you know, up in New Yankee Jersey or something. And you yeah, called we called him, him. Up on the phone. Right, he crumbled. I mean, he just caved right in. Well, that, 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 I mean, his that, letter that goes was to show you that most of most of people out here do have a heart, just like me. I'm a nice guy. You know, I, I'm I'm for the human race. Don't get me wrong. You know, mm. I, I like people, but you know, oh, I don't that's believe obvious, in, Rock. I don't believe in the mixing of races. And, you know, I'm being serious now. I don't believe that you ever slept with a black woman. I don't think you're that dumb. Mm. I don't think you'd do a thing like that. Well, why do you think I would say a thing like that, Rock? To aggravate him. Oh, come on. I think you said that to aggravate him. I don't think you'd do something like that. You've got better sense than that. You're too smart. You ain't dumb, Mr. Lasseter. You're a smart man. I'll give you that. You might not have a college education. I ain't got one either. But you do have some common sense. You know, you're not perfect. Where where do I fall fall short of perfect in your eyes, Rock? Well, you have a lot of problems, you know, and Right, Muffy wouldn't let me get the Lincoln, but you know, I can well, get it. Well that's now. part of your problem. Who who wears the pants in your family? You or your wife? Oh Muffy, yeah. Why don't you go in there and, and just drive home with one and she don't like it, tell her to hit the road. Well just what you done with your last wife. Uh, well no, the last one left me, remember? Well, you can. Uh, that's I, what actually, I'm I enjoy that's Muffy's what I'm company very you much. Get the Continental. She don't like it. Tell her to hit the road. But I, I enjoy Muffy's company very, very much. Does your wife work? No. You're the breadwinner, right? Yes. That entitles you to have a car. Well, I have if a car. If I go out and buy tourist. a new pickup truck and I come home, and my wife's going to throw a fit? No, she knows better. But Muffy got me the Taurus. You see, I do have a car. You mean she bought that car? Yeah. Well, why didn't you buy it? Because she. Why bought didn't it. you buy the car that you wanted to start with? Well, I wanted the Taurus. 
You see, actually... Well, why I, didn't you tell her you wanted the you Lincoln see, I Continental? took her over to look at Thunderbirds, and now she didn't like the Thunderbirds, there. but walking out, she... The, the tourist caught her eye, and it was the tourist that I wanted to start with, but I didn't think that she'd want it. Are you going to get the Lincoln or not? It was just like with the leather furniture. You see, Are you going to get the Continental or not? Yeah, I'm picking it up tonight. Are you really going to get it? Yes. Does your wife know about it? Yes. Well, well, what seems to be the problem here? Well, there isn't any problem anymore. Well, what was their problem? You seem to have had a problem. You've been crying about it all week. Well, Muffy thought that the car was too much, and I wanted to pay cash for it, and she didn't. Well, it is a lot of money, and you could... Spend your money a little bit more wisely. You know, you could make a better investment when it comes to an automobile. Well, I appreciate that. I it's, it's a luxury that, item. But yeah, it's a luxury item. It's, it's it, a, it is. Ego trip. No two you ways know, about you it. You can afford it. I say go for it, you know. Well, if you got it, flaunt it, man, you know. That's right. That's what I do. Mm -hmm. Rock, I, I got it. I got to take a commercial break. Well, can, I, can I put you on hold? Sure, go ahead. Okay, Rocky is back. I tell you, lots of things are back these days. Back on the Rocky. How long has it been? It's been almost a year, hasn't it? Yeah, it's been a long time. At least nine months. Uh, have you mellowed at all in that uh, time? I'm the same person. I haven't turned into a hippie or anything like that since I've talked to you last. I'm not out here smoking dope or nothing, and I haven't gone into depression. You know, you know what I got about two weeks ago? What's that? I got a copy of Beggar's Banquet on CD. Oh, it's my favorite album. Oh, man. do you have it on CD, Rock? No, I don't have a, one of those type of recorder machines. Oh, you got it. You, you, you don't have to get the big ones. I mean, even the well, small I'm portable not ones get are into fine. That, that kind of thing, because if I buy that, then I've got to go out and buy all these CD discs. I've got a tape player, and I got the uh, what do you call it, the stereo. Yeah, on the but stereo, I listen yeah. to Beggar's Banquet quite often. Oh, it's great, great I, album. I love it. Well, you, you see, if you got it on CD, it would never get scratchy. You'll hear things that you never heard yeah, on the disc. Yeah, but see, I've got it on tape. I keep recording it, so I don't I don't ever play the original. Uh -huh. See, I play my records. Or I've got a library. They're all on my tape. Then I listen to the Stones. If I'm not listening to Beggar's Banquet, I'm probably listening to Let It Bleed or Sticky Fingers. Okay, for the for the benefit, I you know, there are a lot of people that, that listen to the show now that weren't around way back when. See, I know. You see, Rocky is short for the Rock and Roll Klansman, and that's because Rocky has an affinity for the Rolling Stones. Uh, rock, go on. Tell them what your favorite Stones uh, cut is. My favorite? Yeah. I've got more than one favorite. But well, you used to have one favorite that we always found very amusing. You're not going to say brown sugar. That's right. Well, that's what somebody else said. That was never my word. I, I beg your you pardon. Were say that. I remember having I, a conversation. I like brown sugar. But listen to it. Yeah, listen to the slaves. Listen to them on the ship. Listen to the whips. Yeah, I don't see nothing wrong with Jagger saying that. He's already got in trouble from the blacks, you know, when he did the Some Girls album. Because they said it was racist. Mm -hmm. Because he said he wanted to stay up drinking all night with Puerto Rican girls, and he didn't have enough jam for the boogies. That's what Jagger said. Mm -hmm. I didn't say that. That's what he said. Well, I don't remember I anybody say saying that. that you, you know, had written the song. It was in Rolling Stone magazine. I didn't say that. Rolling That's Stone Jagger's said word. that you said it? What? Rolling Stone said that you said it? The Rolling Stone magazine, it was in Rolling Stone magazine. Do you subscribe to Rolling Stone? I buy it when I see a picture of the Stones on there. It's like when Keith Richards was on there. Uh, I bought it because of his album that he did, a solo album. Do you have that? No, but I've heard it. I saw oh, it on it MTV. Oh, it's grim. I think it's awful, don't you? I think it's better than uh, Jagger's solo project. Mm -hmm. well, I don't like to see the Stones broke up, okay? 68. It's just like the Beatles. They they weren't any good after they broke up. Uh -huh. I know I like the Stones. I, it's, it's better than a lot of this other crap that's out here now because I watch MTV with the kids. You know, they got MTV on. I see what's on there. I know who's You let your kids are. watch MTV? My kids watch MTV. That's right. There's uh, nothing wrong with that. Well, Rocky, uh, Captain Jack uh, just called and he wants to say hello to you. Well, I'd sure like to say hello to Captain Jack. You guys haven't been uh, talk you guys haven't talked since I guess we did the first uh, Lasseter group. No, we haven't. Okay, uh, well, Captain uh, Jack. One one second here. Okay, now Captain Jack. Captain Rocky, how are you? Fine. Did well, you good. hear his last Lasseter's group, Rocky? What? Did you hear him when he did another Lasseter's group? Yeah, I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> what that sick. No, it wasn't too good. Oh, man, I tell you, it's great to that hear That sounded like it was kind of contrived to me. <laughs> it was probably people from the neighborhood. Yeah, I tell you, it is so great. Here you are today's basher. Lash out I'm not Lasher. Basher Lasher. I didn't call in the Bash Lasher. No, I know That's that. Not why I called Rocky, in. Rocky, why didn't you call in, uh, what was it, about a week or so ago when we did the, you know, the old home show, uh, 
You know, we even gave out a special number he for wasn't you. Here, he was up in Wyoming. Come on, you were here a week ago. Was I here a week ago? Yeah, yeah I, I remember. Remember, we had ago. Southside Johnny on. We had the Brandon Brain Lady. All the I, the the, uh, the the petitioner was on. All the all the people Tom, from the old days. Tom from Lutz. No, Tom. Tom, from Lutz Tom call in. No, Tom. Tom from Lutz is still not allowed on. Why he called in? Why? Because he refuses to admit that he lied. I mean, you know, I've got a standing offer with Tom. Let me tell you something about Tom from Lutz. Do you mind? No, not at all. He's very intelligent, and I think there's a lot of hosts afraid oh, of him. Come on, Rocky. That the guy's making hard. it up. He's a blowhard. Have you ever heard hard. him on the air? He must read all the time. He must listen. He must not do nothing. No, Rocky, he only says he reads. Rocky, you know where Carolyn's at? I heard she's out in California. I hope she stays out. She's probably out in San Francisco. No, I just, I just, well, guys, I just got a card from her. Uh, she should be back any day now. Is she in San Francisco? Yeah. Huh? Walking up and down the street? Is that what she's doing? He won't answer you. That answer oh, you're, you. you're asking me? Well, Captain Jack well, seems to be the one that knows it. You're, you're the one that gets Captain no, Jack. She's, she's visiting her family in California. She should be back any time now. Her family. She's that poor family. family's probably out there in San Francisco. <laughs> what was the name of that street where all them fags hang out out there? I think that's the whole town. I think the mayor out there is probably in charge and the police and everything else. Blaster what he is. Then go to, he's back on the radio. God dog it while well, we got him now. I tell you. Well, I'd just like to thank God that Mr. Lasseter let me back on. Well, all he's done, Rocky, is gold material. Let me, hey, well, let me tell you something. He says he wants my information. Yeah. Well, if it means that much to you, Mr. Lasseter, yeah. you've got it. Hey, Bob. Well, I've always asked for would it, you Rob. Drop your, Rob. Bob, would you drop your big gold ring on your desk so we can hear it? Listen at this, Rocky. Uh, all right. And, Listen to that, Rocky. Listen to this, Mr. Lasseter. Yeah. How about let us hear that big old How big that for a gold ring? That old big bend that you wear on your wrist. Could you let us hear it tick? Uh, I, I don't have my watch on today. Yeah, you can't crank up that old car. Well, be, besides, yeah, thought, the, hey, the, the, the watch is electronic. It, it doesn't Mr. tick. Lasseter, yeah, yeah, Rock. I thought about writing your wife a letter. Uh-huh. I was going to tell her to kind of ease up on you. She, uh, <clears throat> she would have probably appreciated it. Well, I may write her if I... If she I was always you, very fond of you, Rocky. Huh? Uh, she she was always very fond of you. You know, I've talked to her when she was on that other station. Uh-huh. That other station, as far as I'm concerned, don't even exist. You used to be on... You used to call it the dating show over there? No, I used... To, she was on there. She answered the phone one time I talked to her. Oh. Rocky, can I put you on hold again? i got a break for a news, right. uh, news brief. Okay, Charlie Davis standing by with a WFLA news brief. Rocky, the rock and roll Klansman, back on the phone. My God, what a great day, huh? One fifty four the time. Rocky, the rock and roll Klansman from St. Petersburg, on the phone with. I got us park. I moved. Oh, you moved. I moved into a better location. Well, I, I left St. Petersburg and I moved to Pinellas Park. I've come up in the world. To Pinellas Park, you've come up in the world. You better believe it. I'm right off Forty Ninth. Right off Forty Ninth. Yeah, I, I'm not far from the racetrack, and we got our own water tower, and it's a pretty neat place. Pizza parlor over here, and got everything a man would need. You know? Well, Rocky, you know, a lot has happened since last we talked. Uh, any views on the election or any of the... Uh, oh, yeah. Votes? I'll make a prediction. George Bush is the next president. Uh-huh. You like I'm Bush? I'm not too happy with Mr. Quayle. I'm not happy with him at all. And What's your I, problem with Quayle? What's the problem with him? Yeah. I just don't like him. I don't like his answers. I don't like the answer that he gave that when they... But Rocky comes from good stock. His old man used to belong to the John Birch Society. I know. So did I at one time. But John Bird Society ain't the same since he died. Let me tell you something. When they ask him on the debate, what would you do if Mr. Bush died? And he, he went blank and he didn't say nothing. Why didn't he say that if I am elected, I'll do the job that the people that elected me to do to do? Why didn't he say something like that? Why, why did he have to say something like, I'll pray? Why did he have to do that? That sounds like something Michael Dukakis would say. Jeez, really? I think what they should have done, I think Benson should have ran for president, and Michael Dukakis might have should have ran for the vice president. What did you think of all that support that Jesse Jackson got in the primaries? I think that was all contrived. I think I think he's Jesse Jackson. I, I think Michael Dukakis don't like colored people. That's what I think, and I think he invited him over there for supper 
so he could get all that black vote. Well, when he thought he was really, you know, I thought he was going to win there for a while because he was really coming on strong, you know. Jesse. Everybody said Bush was a wimp, and they said Michael Dukakis oh. was going to bring new blood into it. And he had all this black support, and he had all these welfare people supporting, all these unwed mothers, they're all going to vote for him. And then it all fell through because the people out here saw the same thing I did. They saw that he invited that man over there just to get votes from the blacks. Well, then how come Dukakis isn't your candidate if indeed he doesn't like blacks? Because I know that Bush don't either. Oh. Ain't neither one of them likes them. When you run, you know, if I was running for the presidency, uh-huh. I'd do the same thing. I wouldn't invite him over for supper, but if they called me a racist or something, I'd deny it. I do the same thing that they well, why would you deny it? I thought you were proud of your feelings. Yeah, but I'm not I'm not running for the presidency. I'd get in the White House and then I'd put the screws to them. Do you mean do you think most people in this country would be appalled at your being a racist and they wouldn't vote for you if you announced that? I think that if I did that I wouldn't get the black vote. That's the same thing that George Wallace done. That man don't care about the colored. I don't like him. But if I'm gonna run for public office, I'm gonna say I do like him. Mm-hmm. But I don't. And then when I get in the White House, then I can put the screws to him. That's what David Duke should have done. But David Duke, he, he messed it all up. Did you hear the last show I did with Duke? He was sweating, Rocky. He was literally sweating. I had him on the ropes. Well, he was sweating because you had him on there a long time. But he's, he's the one that kept the green to stay. He was on for four hours. Well, he couldn't have been sweating too bad. He would have walked out. No, his, uh, his girlfriend... Kept suggesting to him uh, every time we did a break. She said, "You know, get out of here. This isn't something. going good." Of all, the, of all the guests that you've ever had on your show, David Duke was the most intelligent. He gave you some hard time. I beg your pardon, Rocky. It was the other way around. I don't know, you know that. He had an answer for everything you said. Yeah, and I had an explanation for every answer that he gave. You know, I, I had to come back and clean hey, clean them up for him. He's smart. He's a smart man. Well, he, he probably is very smart. He isn't a, he's probably the most intelligent caller you ever had. Yeah, it's probably the most miserable interview he's ever done. Gave him a hard well, time, I'll, Rock. I'll give you granted there because you're smart. You, I said before, you ain't a dumb man. You're a smart man. You're almost like Chris Christopherson. You know, you're what you call a, uh, what do they call it? Uh, not a Silver G- tongue devil. No. Oh. Uh, there's a name, a road scholar. No, Rocky. You're a road scholar. No, no. Nah. You didn't even finish high school. I know that. But you're a road scholar. Oh, Rocky, you're too kind. I have to admit it, Mr. Lasseter. Hey, I followed you too long. I know you better. There's these young punks out here riding around in these BMWs with their phones calling in, and they say, Al, I've been listening to you for three months. They don't know what they missed. Yeah, the good old days. They don't hey, remember Rock, the monologue that you've done. Rock, do you, do you want to stay in the next hour and maybe take some calls? No, i got to go. Oh, bummer. i got to go, Mr. Lasseter, but I'll send you the stuff. Okay. I'll send it to you. Talk to you soon, Rock. All right. Be good. Eight minutes after. Minutes after the hour, two o'clock. Welcome back to hour number three on October twenty seventh, nineteen hundred and eighty eight. Lasseter with you on the radio for this third and final hour of this edition on nine seventy WFLA. It's it's last shout at Lasseter Day. We enjoyed it so much yesterday. We decided to do the whole damn show on it today. Uh, let's see what's the story. Dan at uh, Eckerd College. Dan, you're on the air at nine seventy. <clears throat> uh, hello, hello, Dan. Hello. Yeah, you're on the air. What's up, chump? Uh, not much. Uh, what you call for, Dan? I just wanted to ask you a couple questions. Okay. Uh, they're really simple questions, yes or no, and uh, I don't want to hear a bunch of caca. Well, you'll hear whatever I feel like, you know, saying. Uh, well, it's my show, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I would do the favor for you, too. Mm-hmm. Are you gay? Uh, why? Is it important to you? Looking for a date tonight? What's that? Are you looking for a date tonight? No. I got your wife here. She said you were. Oh, really? And I just wanted to... Uh, mm-hmm. Clarify that. Uh-huh. Second question. Can you read? Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, I can. You can? Yep. What What grade level? What grade level? Uh, yeah. Uh, adequately. Uh, I read about 300 words a minute. About 300 words a minute? Yeah. Yeah. You're just the Luke Skywalker, aren't you? 
No, actually, it's not that much above average. Average is about 220, 230, something like that. I see. Do you have any black relatives? Not that I know of, no. Okay, final question. Mm-hmm. Why, how come all your clientele is just a bunch of low-rent rednecks? Don't you ever talk to intelligent people like me? Uh, Dan, you seem to fit perfectly into the show. Uh, let's go to Larry in Palm Harbor. Larry, you're on the air at 970 WFLA. Oh, uh, yes, Bob? Yeah, Larry. Oh, uh, I'd I, I, I be wanting to know how come you never be talking about things that um, are, are about our race. Mm. And I also and I also be wanting to tell you that I'm no longer going to buy my collard greens on your station no more. Uh-huh. <laughs> and also, Bob, I, my, my full name is Larry, you bang your lips. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And also, I'm not going to, I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to be listening to the rap station from now on mm-hmm. because I'd be thinking you ain't no nice person at all. And always, you always be, be calling people subhuman pigs. Do you find yourself the, you know, the center of attraction when you go to parties? Uh, no, when, when I be going to parties at Yeah, when you, when, when you go to parties, are, are you kind of the center of attraction? Everybody kind of gathers around to, you know, listen to your wit and that kind of stuff? Most of the time, they that's what they be doing. Uh-huh. What about when you be going to parties? Do people be coming around and be the? Do you be the center of attraction? Why? Well, I, I yes. I you see. The, the, as a matter of fact, I normally am the center of attraction at a party because my material is funny. Uh, Bob and Tampa, you're on the air at 970 WFLA. Yes, Mr. Lassiter, I've got to lash out at you. Okay. Been listening to you for a long time. Mm-hmm. Uh, past few few months. Uh, been listening to you a lot less. Mm-hmm. Your show has gone down the drain. Uh-huh. Uh, you're, which is even more evident by the fact that you're bringing back this uh, lash out at Lasseter, which used to be called Bash Lasseter. Mm-hmm. Um, you are going against that uh, day when you were watching that television show and saw those people in Biden and said you'd never do anything like that again. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, you're right. I said I, I would never do anything like that right. again. You're, obviously, you're it changed my mind. Coming back on it because you see that uh, you're new. You were trying to come up with a new kind of format, and it obviously didn't work. And uh, you might even say that um, you're overdoing your stay here. I think you're running out of fuel. You've got people like Lionel coming on the radio on Sunday and with shows. You well, I know. I beg your pardon. I had nothing, literally nothing well, not whatsoever you. to do. I'm, I'm not saying you personally. Uh, as a result of you, he does have his own show. Um, he is slowly edging into the market. You have uh, Miss Richards, who now has a full three-hour slot, uh, mm-hmm. Monday through Friday. Mm-hmm. Um, you have, I think, you uh, your political views as far as bashing Bush and Quail and um, trying to be the good man with the Dukakis people. Uh, no, I beg your pardon. I bash Dukakis, too. I realize you bash Dukakis. He's a loser. But for the most part, you... Got to vote for him, but he's still a loser. You're right. He's a loser, and Bush is a loser, and you were the first to admit to that, but you uh, definitely are partial uh, towards Dukakis in the way that you do not bash him as much as you do Bush and the Republican Party. Mm-hmm. And I believe you wore that into the ground. Mm-hmm. And uh, you've lost a lot of your vital listeners that made your show what it is today. And I, I don't really think so. There's no indication of that whatsoever. Yeah, there is, if you let me finish. Oh. And if you, uh, I think you're beginning to realize that, and that's why you're reverting back to mm-hmm. some of your old ways. But it, it just might be too late for that. And if I might do one other, if I might, if I might take another two minutes of your time. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I've heard Lionel on your show, and I've heard the Lionel impersonator. Yeah, and, and yeah. I was wondering if if I might attempt to do the impersonation of the Lionel impersonator. No, you may not. Us uh, for a lash out at last today, Jeff in Clearwater. Jeff, you're on the air at 970 WFLA. Hi, Bob. Oh, hi, Jeff. I just wanted everybody to know that you are gay. Mm-hmm. You came over to my house last night. Would you tell everyone about it? No, I couldn't, Jeff. Well, we, you know we made love. Mm-hmm. Did you enjoy it, Bob? Mm, no, not particularly. Your hygiene leaves quite a bit to uh, be desired. Well, that's not nice to say, Bob. Mm-hmm. I liked you. Well, you like all the boys. Well, that's true. Mm-hmm. Bob, is Mary really a man? No. She's not? No. 
<sighs> well, I quality of furniture. Comedic talent of this market is pathetic. What was that? I heard she was a transvestite, Bob. Did you? Is she? I've already answered, you know. <laughs> what exactly is it that you find amusing about this? <laughs> I think you're a jerk and a subhuman pig. Oh. I think you're a faggot. Well, just, you know, remember, I'm the one who's getting paid for this. You're You're on your own time, man. Well, I, just, I think I think you're a howling liberal faggot, man. Oh. You probably think a great deal about gay people, don't you? Spend a lot of your time thinking about it. You know, you know you, what you really should do is you should let down your inhibitions. Obviously, you are a latent homosexual, and you should let down your inhibitions and, and go out and do what it is that you really want to do. Can you I know, do rather it? than that, rather than suppressing your sexual desire and and you know trying pretending to be you know a man. Come on, Jeff, you're not a man. Sixteen and a half minutes after the hour of two o'clock. Uh, Bob in Tampa. Bob, you're on the air at 970 WFLA. Yeah, uh, Bob, uh, first-time caller, uh, recent transplant. Uh, call me, uh, well, not a snowbird, really, but I'm, cause I actually live here now. Moved here in April, uh, and I uh, came from the Midwest. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't really have anything personally against you. However, uh, you, you advertise your radio station as WFLA uh, News Radio. No, I don't. That's the way the people who own it advertise it. Well, it, news is not news if you're... Uh, I'm, I don't care about you buying the Lincoln Continental. Mm -hmm. I don't care how you're going to vote for the presidency. Mm -hmm. Uh, you're entirely too, uh, uh, too, uh, personal with the people, and you mm -hmm. actually, you're, uh, you're too opinionated. Mm -hmm. And I've come back from, like I said, from the Midwest, conservative, mm -hmm. uh, conservative area. Right, home of, you know, PAPA talk radio, home of boring talk radio, KMOX, great stations like that. KMOX, you got right. it. Best radio oh. station in the world. Oh, well, sure, if you like to listen to the plant lady and, you know, listen to quilting bees on the air. Well, it's more, boring. It's, no, it's, it's much more than that. Much more than that. Mm -hmm. And they call it at your service, and that's what they are. Mm -hmm. And I don't really feel that you're doing any service to this community or to uh, well, sir, the, the listeners. Well, sir, the, the people who listen, this, this happens to be the highest rated talk show in the market uh, by far. And the people who listen to it feel as though it's a service, and they don't really give a damn what you think. Well, of course. You know, they don't, there, there's, you know there, there is a station in this market that's just like KMOX. As a matter of fact, they actually even try to emulate KMOX. They have virtually no ratings whatsoever. It's a, a gigantic, monumental bore. I've, I've listened to them, too, and you're right. I, I, do, I must agree with you there, because they are nowhere near uh, KMOX, and we haven't even been able to find, since we moved down here, we haven't been able to find any station. Well, like the difference KMOX. between KMOX and TKN is that KMOX understands that if you're going to do PAP radio, at least go out and pay some money to some qualified people who can do it, where the jerks over at TKN, you know, feel as though you can get away with, you know, 18, 20 grand a year. And that's exactly what you get. 18 or 20 grand a year's worth of talk show host. I see. Well, I just uh, wanted to call in and give you my opinion. I've, uh, you know, unfortunately, is, uh, and I know this is going to probably toot your horn in that, but uh, uh, unfortunately, I do listen to you all the is time. Is that something like opening I a can of worms? I despise you, and, uh, and, and, and like I said, the way you. Uh, you despise you me, I see. You don't even know me, but you despise me. Well, I despise the way you conduct your radio program. Mm -hmm. and, and why do you keep listening to it? Well, I don't know. Like I said, I know that's going to toot your horn and kind of blow your ego off. my horn? And blow my ego off. Are you serious? Yeah, I'm serious. Mm, grossly overrate yourself, because sir. Because there's probably a lot of people like me that listen to your radio station. That's right, that, sir. Uh, that really do not like you. Mm -hmm. Well, but that's what they say to themselves. To you know, just because of that. Mm -hmm. for, in, in other words, to try and and of course, and having a day like today, lash out at Lasseter gives them their chance to to more lash out. Well, what is it? What is it, what is it about me that you don't like? I'm I'm sorry, sir. What is it about me that you don't like? Uh, I don't like the the way you, uh, like I said, give your opinions on a radio because I could care less about your opinions. I mean, I, it's, well, you, it's my you, business you, who I'm going to vote for president. Uh -huh. My business, what kind of car I'm going to go out and buy, uh -huh. and it's not for everybody in Tampa Bay to know. Or wherever the you know. Well, sir, I, you know, I, I can't help it if you're so inhibited that uh, you know you think your business is is that personal. I, you know, hey, go for it, man. Okay, thank you, Bob. I appreciate your time. Uh, take care, there. You have a good one now. Nine. I really do get a, a large charge out of people who come in from the hinterlands who have never heard real talk radio. Get a real large charge out of them. One hey. reason, one reason only. What's that? Chicks. I'm gonna tell you that you are disgusting and you stink. Get off the state too. You, you miserable too. wretch. Catch Lionel taking your calls Sunday at three on News Radio nine seventy WFLA. Somebody ought to catch that man, put an end to it, you know, before it uh, well, whatever. Rob in Madeira Beach. Rob, you're on the air at nine seventy WFLA. How you doing? Oh fine. 
Hey, um, Bob, I was just wondering, you know, uh, what's your purpose in life, you know? What are you, gonna, what are you like, working towards? What am I working are towards? Just, like, having fun? Great wealth, yeah. great wealth, uh, notoriety, things of that nature. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Are you going to, like, try to get a TV spot or something? No, I'm not interested in doing television. Why not? Because I'm not interested in doing television. It's too much of an imposition. No? But do you have any purpose in life? Is there... Is there any, like, drive Yeah, I just board? told you, you know, to ga g gather great wealth and, and become notorious. That's terrible. So well, it maybe it's terrible like for a guy who doesn't stand a chance of gathering great wealth and becoming notorious, but for people who do have an opportunity to do so, who have the ability to do so, it's not terrible. No? No, I think you should go after something more worthwhile. Mm -hmm. Like, personal peace. Well, you mean, like, like what, being a clerk like you are or something? <laughs> No, no, I mean, no. Like, um, I mean, like a peace of mind, you know? I'll have peace of mind, thanks. You do? Oh, yeah. I guess you must. Talking to all these people. I'm supposed to be lashing out at him. Oh, all right. Well, Bob, what can I say bad about him? Who are you voting for in the election? <clears throat> Jones. Yeah, and I was just trying to get some idea of, you know, how much of it's put on and... You well, that's, that's that's because, you see, sir, these are people who are not used to talking with other human beings, and they think that it's, you know, somehow going to throw me if they come on and say things like, Oh, Bobby, you were so good last night. You know, they they, they think that's going to throw me. Okay, well, you, you sound like you enjoy it and seem to be pretty quick on your feet. I do enjoy other people's misery, sir. You're right. <laughs> okay, well, that, that was just my comment. Uh, Andy, would you like to go to that sold-out Bucks game with the Dolphins this Sunday? So I, I don't even follow the Bucks. I, I gave up on them years ago. You don't, you don't want tickets to the game. Hottest hottest ticket in town, and you don't want them. <laughs> right. Okay. Oh, but thank you anyway. No problem. Take care, Andy. Lowell in Tampa. Lowell, you're on the air at 970 WFLA. Well, Lester, i got to tell you, mm -hmm. you've been uh, sucking up to these conservatives and religious types way too much. Mm -hmm. And I don't understand why. Because basically, you had some fairly good sense when I first started listening to you. Mm -hmm. And I would like to understand, you know, in my own mind, why it is that you feel it's necessary to basically walk on both sides of the street, so to speak? I don't walk on both sides of the street, sir. Well, I don't I know. I walk on whichever side of the street suits me. And I don't give a damn what, who, el who else is walking on that side of the street. It doesn't bother me at all. Yeah, well, it See, unlike most human beings, I don't feel this great need to have other people with the same views around me to reinforce my own views. Okay, I can appreciate that, but at the same time, it, it appears at times that you contradict yourself. Actually, you know, you, you'd be saying one thing one day. Sir, I'm a mere human being, and I constantly reassess my positions. So from time to time, my positions change. Or there's another great problem. People frequently don't listen to what it is that I have said. All right. Well, I, I would have to say at the same time, uh, taking into what Uncle Dickie said yesterday, that you know you had to take the BS factor to a certain degree with what you say. Is that a fact, Bob? I don't know what he said. Well, he, he basically uh, was commenting that <clears throat> you know whatever thing that you say, you have to take with a certain grain of salt. I don't think so. Oh. I tell you what I think. So, so it's not just entertainment. No, it's not just entertainment. I entertain you with what I think. You are entertaining, by the way. I mean, but I am an entertainer, sir, but I entertain you with what I think. Right, right. Okay, well, you know, in any case, I just, you know... Would you like the tickets to the Bucks game? I'd be pleased, Bob. You'd completely erase any doubts I had about you with that. Well, I certainly, in that case, I won't give them to you. Oh, no. I, you know, I'm not trying to bribe you. I'm no, no bribe, Bob. I'm... Okay, well, I'll put you on hold. Michael will give you the information on how to get them. Off he goes to the Bucks Dolphins game which is sold out, by the way, this coming Sunday. And on top of that, becomes eligible for the WFLA tailgate party. There will be a drawing Friday night during the sports huddle for dinner for two at the Galleria Restaurant at the Pickett Suite on Saturday. Accommodations for two at the Pickett Suite Saturday night and breakfast Sunday morning. And if that wasn't enough, a box lunch to take to the football game. Off we go to Corey in Clearwater. Corey, you're on the air at 970 WFLA. Fine, thanks. I'm drawing a blank here, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna most give you a chance to ask me a question. <laughs> you want to ask me? <laughs> what gives these people the audacity to think I care? God, one, one, I just, I disagree with that. You went in voluntarily to uh, to look at the car, and you could walk at any point you wanted to. That's right. From uh, the standpoint of uh, uh, 
if you're having something stolen from your personage, you don't have a choice in that. Well, well, so well sir, sir, you know, that, that doesn't make any difference. You know, I, I suppose you might argue, well, gee, you went into the neighborhood where they steal gold chains voluntarily, too. No, that uh, you, oh, what's the you, difference, you, you, sir? You, you, are, you are free. Nobody, nobody is holding you hostage. Sir, car, anybody that's going to relieve you of your goods or your money dishonestly knowing that they are relieving you of your goods or money, you know, what's the difference if a guy comes up from behind you because you're too stupid to stay out of the neighborhood and grabs your gold chains? Or what's the difference if you go into a car dealership or a brokerage office or a real estate office or a first store or whatever it might because, be, because, and because, they take advantage of your stupidity no, because, because you don't because know what it's worth? When you go into a car dealership or you go into uh, in, in to purchase a lot of things, you know, barter is an accepted uh, uh, way, you know, haggling on price, whatever. That, you know, that, that that's an accepted thing. And people uh, you know, accept that. Yeah, that. That's part of the culture. And also, I, I've never really ever so heard. Sir, you, what you are doing is you're trying to justify dishonesty. No, no, no one, no one is. Uh, I'm because, not trying to... because the people who are dishonest this way are of the same class that you are. No, you know. First, first of all, this is yeah, you're saying that I'm trying to justify something. I'm not trying to justify anything at all. What I'm saying is that you. Uh, Pushing to make uh, these two things the same, I think, I think is nonsense. I've never heard of anyone. Ever yes, sir, being, I, I don't remember. I, I, I've never I heard of sir, anyone ever sir, being sir, physically I injured. Sir, by. I don't recall saying that they were the same. I said, in terms of the morality, I don't see any difference. Well, um, well, no. I mean, one, one, one's voluntary and one's involuntary. Sir, anybody who rips you off in a business deal who knows he's ripping you off is not doing it involuntarily. Uh, you, you don't have. To contract yourself uh, if a thief coming up to so, you, you know, you are just a what has happened to someone off all i am no saying, sir, i don't i don't believe i said that don't don't try to put words in my mouth well, that, I, you know, that's exactly see, that's what another you said. thing that really really kind of ticks me off is when people try to put words in my mouth what i said sir i'd be delighted to repeat it for you is you are a classic example of someone who doesn't see anything wrong with i didn't say that you did it sir I did don't, I? I? I don't. I don't did I, sir? I didn't say that you one. did it. Did I, sir? I don't accept the. I your didn't logic say that you did it. Did same. I, sir? Pardon me. Let's go to uh, Randy in St. Petersburg Beach. Randy, you're on the air at 970 WFLA. Uh, yes, Bob. Uh, judging from those from that call, a couple of uh, callers back. Hello. Go ahead, Randy. Um, I understand that you're you're a fag. And uh, two. Um, I used to uh, I used to be um, uh, the pimp for your wife, and I got forty dollars a night for it. Uh, you there? Yeah, I am. Are you? Yeah, I'm still here. <clears throat> Guess what, Randy? What? You're going to be there for the rest of your life. Wayne in Tampa, you're on the air at 970 WFLA. It's too bad Randy didn't understand what an insult that was. Go ahead, Wayne. Hey, Bob, I think these faggots calling in talking about something about your wife, you know, that's... I don't think they should do that. If they got a gripe, the gripe should be with you, okay? Now, my gripe is... Uh, Sir, they're not intelligent enough to formulate and articulate their gripes. That's about all they can do. Well, whatever the case may be, I think it's, uh, I think it's appalling. But anyway... Uh, I think you, 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 within the last maybe four or five months, uh, you used to really talk about things that were meaningful to our community, and it seems as if, uh... Sir, I've, 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 I am renowned for not doing the local topics. <laughs> renowned for it. Yeah. Well, anyway, I mean, before you used to talk about meaningful things, period, you know, whether it be local or national or whatever the case may be, but now it seems as if, you know, you're getting these... <laughs> These weird topics on, and 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 they're really not doing anything for us. Mm -hmm. So you know, maybe you should think about going back to the old way a little. Maybe getting some some things that we can talk about. Well, well, sir, I'll, I'll tell you what. Uh, I can't ever recall seeing Tony from Ebor City on City on my screen during one of those meaningful programs. Well, I've called you a couple of times, Bob. Well, well, most people don't, sir, because most people just don't give a damn. And my attitude is, hey. If you guys ain't swift enough to look out for your own interests, to hell with you. Well, you know, that's not the I'm case. I'm looking out for my own interests, man. I, I, I really do enjoy Lincolns and large gold rings. <laughs> I enjoy them very, very much, and I'm sick and tired of pulling teeth 
uh, with people trying to get them to talk about things that are really important. So, you know, what the hell? Well, I just think that you got a few listeners out there that really do care. And some of us are really doing some things, so uh, just for the sake of us, maybe you should think about it. Take care. And, yeah, I'm what? And this guy that answers the phone for you. Mm hmm I don't think you're the fag. I think he's a fag. Oh. We'll let Tony speak for himself. Dan in St. Petersburg. Dan, you're on the air at 970 WFLA. You know, Bob, you really are just a waste of human flesh. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I think you really are, are um, a gay, you know. Well, Dan, I don't, I don't know that I'm really just a waste of human flesh. I mean, for example, I give you something to think about. I give you something to dwell on. You know, and you got, you got a big... Well, then you don't, you know, you, wait a second, you know, you Dan. You know, I think ass. you've got a point because obviously you're not worth anything. And if all I can really accomplish in this life is give you something to think about, then, you know, I think, Dan, I have to agree with you. I am a waste. Well, you know, I just, I, I really, I can't see what, what purpose you serve on the, earth, on the earth. You're just, you know, as I say, you're just a bit, you just... A well, big Dan, one of the great problems is you can't see anything. You're just a, a big lump of flesh with a big ass on the back of you. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, earns a hell of a lot of money. Well, and uh, you know, I, you probably, um, you probably like has a prestigious job. You probably like to have have things put has in that influence in the community. All the things that you're not, Dan. That's what I am. And, you know, you really make me sick, man. Then why are you giggling, Dan? Because I didn't know if you'd let that word go on the radio. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh huh. And I, you know, I, that's it's kind of a big thrill in your life to be talking on the radio, isn't it? Oh, no, not really. I mean, really, just, just, you know? just think, just think. Here's Dan, this little piddling nothing, probably has acne, talking on the radio. Oh my God! I just wanted to see if you, if you bleeped out the word that I said, you know, ass. Uh huh. No. Is this about the be, biggest, is this be one that's the about the biggest thrill hey, of your Bob, life, isn't it, Dan? Bob, is this going to be one of probably the going shows? To, It's probably going to be the major thrill of your life, too. Mark in St. Petersburg, you're on the air at 970 WFLA. Hey, Bob, I'm standing out on the balcony, looking at the sun. Uh -huh. Think about where you are, uh -huh. sitting in a little room, talking on the radio, and I was just... Just wondering, are you are you happy with your life? Or Very happy, Mark. With, with what you're doing? I've got something to do in the afternoons. Excuse me? I have something to do in the afternoons. Yes, well, um, I mean, you know, look, look, at, look at you and your life, for? Mark, about the best that you have to do with your life is to try desperately, after sitting there for 12 minutes on hold, to try desperately to insult me. No, no. That's, that's the highlight of your life, man. I'm not trying to insult you at all. I just right. I want, I want to find out what you're... No, you are trying. You're not succeeding. What your goal is. What my goal is to sucker people like you on the air. It increases my ratings. They pay me more and more money every time the ratings go up. That's my goal in life, Mark, and I'm awfully, awfully good at it. Then you can't be very And there happy, isn't though, anybody else in this market, and there are damn few in other markets, who can consistently, for hour after hour after hour, sucker people into coming on the air so that I can humiliate them, insult them, and then hang up on them. Let's go to Pauline in Palm Harbor. Pauline, you're on the air at 970 WFLA. Yeah, Bob, you're there. Yeah, I'm here. I'll be here till 3. Okay, um... I'm surprised that you got a uh, day for a lash out at you. Why? It's something I do with reasonable frequency. Oh, well. I enjoy the I, hell out uh, of it. I'm glad. I uh, called to tell you that uh, the lady that called and said you had a beautiful voice. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Well, I thought... I don't recall any lady today calling and saying oh, you had a beautiful today. voice. Oh, This was a couple of weeks ago. Oh, something's been festering with you, I see. Oh, no. I, th I will not, agree no. with her that you do have a beautiful voice. Mm -hmm. But the thing I was surprised to find out, because I've been wondering who that beautiful voice belonged to. Uh-huh. Uh, why, you're right. Uh, Muffy, is it? Uh, yeah, Muffy, you're right. Went over every scene mm -hmm. of that... Uh, Burgundy, dead leather. Cow no, no, that's, that's dead cow skin, man. Yeah, she was afraid they'd split open. No, that wasn't her fear at all. Oh, that wasn't her fear no, at all? No, Well, then I'd like to talk to you about one of the other programs you had just last week, I mm -hmm. believe, on your trashing of Pinellas County. Mm -hmm. I happen to live in Pinellas, and I would... Ma'am, there's, no, there's no doubt in our minds that you live in Pinellas. Pardon? There's no doubt in anyone's mind here that you live in Pinellas. Oh, yeah, well, okay. I mean, classic. Yeah, I'll go ahead. Yeah, I am classic. 
And in my day, I was a great classic. Mm -hmm. Although, you know... How many days ago was that? Like everybody else. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, uh, uh, also I wanted to talk to you about the controversy of the pardon. Yeah. What, what was that? You wanted to talk about what controversy? The controversy of the Huang Dang Doodle uh -huh. in the Bible. Yeah. Well, I'd like to have the privilege of hooking up your Huang Dang Doodle. I'll bet you would. You probably think about it all the time, oh, don't you? Oh, yeah. You know what I want to hook it up How to? do you feel about a oral sex? Oh, milking machine. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kind of gives you tingling feelings oh, in the naughty parts, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah, you just ask your wife about that. Mm hmm. Good Where do you stand on oral sex anyway? Uh, probably, well, we won't even get into that. Andy, uh, in St. Petersburg. Andy, you're on the air at 970 WFLA. Yeah, do you got AIDS, Bob? No, I don't. You don't? No. Does your wife? No. Well, I I'm surprised, you know, as promiscuous as you two probably are. Do you ever swap your wife with anyone else? No. Why not? You can't get any, you, you, she, they won't take her? They won't take her, Bob? No, uh, she's never been offered. Well, well I, I, I bet I know why, because you're not, because no, no, no other woman wants you. She must be awfully ugly. Mm -hmm. Well, if that makes you happy, then that's what you can think. You know, and, um... See, see, it's so important to you that I be miserable, isn't it? Can you, be, do you realize, Andy, that I've never spent one second of my life thinking about you? Well, not one second, Andy. You see, Andy, you're trying to insult me, but it is utterly impossible because I have thoroughly no respect for you whatsoever. You, on the other hand, are deeply insulted by me. I have no That must mean you that you either. have a great deal of respect for me, Andy, or else what I said would roll right off your back. Gotcha, sucker. And that's in the, uh, the same room with greatness. Well, I just, I just wanted to tell you that you're a filthy scumbag for sitting on all those dead cows, that's all. I, I, I won't start sitting on them until tonight. Well, it's just in advance. I wanted to tell you. Oh, so what's, what's 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 wrong with sitting on dead cow skin? Well, you have no respect for the animal kingdom. They're God's creatures, Bob. but they're already dead, you know. But they're God's creatures. I mean, you could have saved a cow or a whale. I, I, I beg your pardon. These, you know, the, these were probably cows that went to you McDonald's. Probably, you're the kind of person who probably hires an exterminator to come in every month, a killer, in your home. Well, yes. Well, it's terrible, Bob. Those are God's creatures, God's little brown people. Well, I, I noticed that back around your desk, you do like to, to live with bugs and things of that nature, but most of us don't. Now, we're going to do some serious business at 3 o'clock, Bob. We're going to talk about excellence in government instead of dead animals. Oh, uh, you're, you're not going to do another, you know, should Brandon Incorporate show. No, I'm, I'm saving that, Bob. I'm going to do that on election night. Election night. Gene and Tampa. Gene, you're on the air at 970 WFLA. Hello, Bob. Uh, hi, Gene. Uh, how come you said... Hi, you're... Gene. Yeah, wow. Yeah, hi. Oh. Uh, hey, Bob. Yeah. How come you said you're a Republican, but yet you espouse uh, values of the Democratic Party? Well, I don't espouse values of the Democratic Party. I, I, I give my own views. Well, you say you're for higher minimum wage, which the Republicans are against. You say you're... Uh... No, some Republicans are against it. Some are in favor of it. As a matter of fact, George Bush has spoken out in favor of increasing the minimum wage. Yeah, what? Well, a nickel or a dime? <laughs> and, uh, I mean, you're, you're, you're in the Republican Party of the 1870s. This is the 1980s. And, uh, either make... Which party you want to make up? Which party you want to go to? Well, I, I have made up my mind, sir. I have made up my mind. Yeah, you're a Republican Party, but yet you get on the radio and you cut down to uh, Ronald Reagan, which is one of the best presidents of the United States. Uh, Ronald Reagan, sir, is not a classic Republican. Ronald Reagan is a convenient Republican. Okay, let's get off that subject. But, uh, Great, sounds fine to me. Off we go to Mary in St. Petersburg. Mary, you're on the air at 970 yes, WFLN. Like how in the world can they keep you on this radio station? They can keep you me on this radio station, man, because they pay me enough that you I won't leave. You are the worst one that they have oh, ever had Oh, give me a break, lady. I'm probably station. the best damn talk show host in the you whole country. You just think. hate what I say. I don't stink, lady. I'm so damn good it's pathetic. Give me a break. I mean, I'm a natural at this. Bill and Odessa, you're on the air at 970 WFLN. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you're the sorriest son of a gun they ever had since Vinnie Testaverde. Uh-huh. Yeah, and if they'd have kept Steve DeBerg, they wouldn't have even let you walk the walk, walk back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm serious. Dire man's now, life is no football, football in Lasseter. He's got what? nothing else in life. What's that? You fat what? I wasn't talking to you. I was talking to the rest of the audience, sir. Yes, you were too fat to even play the football. Mm -hmm. And if you was to get out there, they could probably, probably win by default. 
for, for your incapacity. My God, so, how could I possibly come back at something like that? Jim and Tampa. Jim, you're on the air at 970 WFLA. Hey, Bob. Yeah, Jim. <laughs> Have a good day. Yes, I am. Thank you for inquiring. Let's go to Vince in Tampa. Vince, you're on the air at 970 WFLA. Uh, there's very few intelligent uh, talk radio shows that uh, that can do the job right. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was wondering why you don't do that. I think Bush is a good guy, and you know, the liberals, they're not sacrosanct. they got a lot of uh, holes that you can punch through. Yeah, I frequently do, sir. Well, I, no, I listen to you more than I uh, understand why. But, uh, you know, I just wish you could get in a little... Some good shots in there. I mean, uh, their policies... Well, well sir, here, sir, this, this, this may come as a, as a tremendous surprise to you, sir, but I, I hold my views because... They're my views. I, I don't say things to please other people. I, I don't right, give right, a damn if you like what I say or not. I got an example. I was watching uh, Nightline the other night, and they had Michael Dukakis on there. Uh-huh. And uh, Ted Koppel was hitting him pretty hard. That's right. About uh, uh, deploying the missiles in 80, 81 and 82, and he said, oh, Carter started that. And he said, yeah, but you were against it. You were for the freeze. You didn't mm-hmm. want us to put the missiles in there. Yep. And if it wasn't for that, uh, we wouldn't have got the treaty. No, that's not what he said at all. He said it can. He said it can be argued that were it not for that, we might not have gotten the treaty. That's precisely what he said. I mean, Koppel or Koppel? Yeah. yeah. Well, he was he was definitely implying that Dukakis was uh, giving away the. No, sir. It's not what he was implying at all. He said it could be argued, and then asked why Dukakis was opposed to it. And did were you satisfied with Dukakis's answer, or do you think? No, that he sir. Was I wrong? wasn't, and I said so the next day. I think, thought it was a pathetic. Performance on the part of Michael Dukakis that's setting now, back it, even it's further. Performance, because that's what's making me angry now. Because they're already starting to make it. Oh, it's not what he stands for; it's the man. And I think it's the what he stands for, and, Amer- and it's an insult to American people to say, "Oh, they didn't go for Dukakis because they didn't like his eyebrows." And I think it was because of his policies. And the, uh, well, sir, you're a hopelessly naive man. Who? Michael, you, the American people, vote for the guy that they like, the guy that's like a bull. The American people do not want to get involved in any of the issues. They're way beyond them. So the American people have consistently, going back just well, about I as far as you can that's go, that's a liberal voted for the, the most likable guy. Get off my phone.